Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Challenge Season 40 Battle of the Arrows Wrap Up Podcast for a preview part one of four. I am Brian Cohn. With me, as always, is my Battle of the Arrows, across all the Arrows co host, Al Asher. Ali, how are you? Wow, we're in our second decade era. Mm-hmm. Um, I am good. I am messaging you privately in the chat to make a format adjustment. But um, <laughs> I'm really, really excited. I will confess, and this will be disappointing perhaps to the audience, though not surprising. Um, I kind of like waited to get into like the Challenge 40 discourse and just like even looking at really who was on the cast. I didn't do any, I didn't listen to anything. I didn't look at anything really besides our Facebook group. And digging in for the preview podcast, I am like fully in my excited era. Like I am so, so, I'm probably just catching up with you now, uh, looking forward to season 40. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I've listened to that many previews. I mean, a shout out to our good friends over the Free Agents uh, podcast, listen to each of their uh, draft podcasts just to get a sense of like, what the what the takes were out there about people were feeling about people or through the Facebook comments about people how people were feeling about people. Um, good, we can timestamp when we're doing this because the trailer just came out today, which really got me hyped up. Um, it answered a couple of the questions I had about what this season could look like. Um, so I think that got me really hyped up. A nice TJ like voiceover of you know people falling off buildings and colliding with each other. You know that always gets the gears going. So yeah, I am hyped. I think. It's going to, I think it's going to really hit like the mainstream. I feel like for the first couple episodes when this hits, and then we'll see how the season goes from there. But I think there's a lot of general excitement for the season across like any sort of challenge fan. General excitement. Um, yeah, I, I am um, well, filled with regret for doing that, but I, I'm, I'm jazzed. I, I think it does feel like there are a lot of eyes on the challenge as I think they deserve to be in, in doing such a big undertaking like bringing 40 contestants on across 40 or 39 seasons of a show. Um, So I'm glad that they're getting the attention. The buzz is buzzing Mm -hmm. from a podcasting perspective though. I haven't felt this nervous since like the big brother people came, you know, I'm like, Oh no, like the OG (laughs) fans are here. Like, Oh no, the people who just like a spectacle are here. Like, but we're happier here. Uh, but I am nervous. It just feels like grand, especially if we're doing preview stuff, which we don't always do. We're doing a big, you know, it deserves a big preview. So we're giving it a big mm-hmm. preview, but I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Yeah, there's a little uh, imposter syndrome. It's like waiting for like the official, official, official uh, co host coming in to take over. It also feels even just like a little weird because. I mean, I guess we kind of talk about this sometimes through seasons, but like when we started, there weren't a lot of challenge podcasts in the streets. Like there were maybe a couple of others. Now they're just all over the place. So it does feel like there's a lot other eyes that are like, quote unquote, the big names that are doing challenge podcasts. So it does, it feels like they got in and then like, oh, look at this season 40. Great time. It's like, where were you in the dog days of some of those like mid 30 seasons, early 30 seasons when it was like for, uh, you know, eight months and we were trudging along every single week. So it doesn't feel fair that some of these podcasts get like the grandeur of season 40. They didn't put in the legwork. We, we earned this. We were here for a while. We're here. We're, we're in our, we're era one. So <laughs> yeah. it's appropriate that we're starting here in era one, but just shout out to you and tricky who created this graphic. To be honest, I'm shocked. You didn't get scooped. I think when did you, when did you, uh, commission this beautiful piece that we're looking at if you're on the video uh podcast with us on youtube yeah i mean basically i think once w- the word officially got out through the grapevines of uh gamer vev that when the cast was flying out like all right it's looking like eras i was like all right well there's a famous singer that's doing something with eras let's try to populate that and jump on it and i think i've texted you about a dozen times like is now a good time to tweet this can i tweet this now can i post this picture now because i've just i've loved it ever since we got it um but i'm glad we saved it for this preview and to reveal it here because it is it is glorious and it it's weird that the challenge hasn't released official eras tour merch like i don't know maybe there's copyright issues i don't know but like where's that like put this on a t-shirt and i'll buy it i'm talking to myself well, hopefully not, because I think you just acknowledge that you have copyright concerns about using this image. But no, um, no, I love it. Uh, a lot of fun. I'd be lying if I didn't say it wasn't like 20% of the reason we're even doing preview coverage to use <laughs> to use the graphic. 
Uh, but look at it in all its glory. So, but we're here to talk about, um, do you see how I just pressed that with authority and it didn't work? Okay. We're here to talk about era one seasons one to 10. Um, you, we don't usually have five podcasts of preview coverage, Brian. So, mm -hmm. um, what I'm going to propose if it's all right with you is I took so many great questions from our Facebook group. Shout out to the Facebook group yes. nearing 700. I am confident mm -hmm. that by the time this podcast airs like a day, we'll have over 700 people in the Facebook group thriving in the off season. Mm -hmm. um, but I tried to take like format questions and general like comparative questions and save those for like the episode zero, maybe when we yeah. have more information and keep the eras tour here for us. People focused. I think, I think that's totally that. fair. I think that's totally fair. I think we also don't want to date ourselves. I think we can ask, we can try to answer some of these questions. And by the time we get to the episode zero, some of them might be answered. So uh, I'm totally for that. We could, you know, structure the each of these podcasts by era. And then, you know, we got the great uh, Mike Bloom for episode zero. And we will hopefully have some answers then. If not, then we'll find out some episode in uh, episode one. So let's start general reaction here uh, for anyone who, who's just joining us, maybe like me, just kind of joining the Challenge 40 discourse. Um, what we know are four teams, seasons 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 39, mm -hmm. LOL. Um, and so we're going to be talking about the people who originated on seasons one to 10 of the challenge. Obviously a lot of these people went on to play in, you know, across the other eras, but these folks, these 10 people we're looking at here on the screen or that we're going to be talking about in your ears. Uh, they started on seasons one to 10. Any general reactions to this gang? So I think my overarching reaction, especially to this gang is how important the all-stars franchise is has been because when you look across this basically every single person i think except of ct and anisa i don't think anisa has been on an all-stars and now there's ct she has. every single okay she has so every single person except for ct has appeared on at least one all-stars and obviously ct has been popping up on the challenge proper and so is Darrell. but like all these people have been able to get their toes back in the water for a challenge and they're not just thrown back in and it's almost like twofold one the pop to see all these names would have just been astronomical if they never had all stars. Like, that would have been crazy if all these people just came back after all this time. That would have been wild. But I don't think any of them would have, nor would this format, I feel like, have made sense or worked if they hadn't done all stars. So I think the groundwork that Mark Long and the rest of that company did to get all stars cooking for the four seasons leading up to this was, I think, subtly like the most important part to build out this, this, this season. I agree completely and was going to say the same exact thing that uh, I think this 40th season, like big event, a uh, pay-per-view event here owes a lot to all stars and the success of all stars, not just in getting people to come back, but in getting like the fans eyes and excitement around those old people and sh older people like old from old seasons mm -hmm. and, and knowing that the fans still had interest in seeing them and that it doesn't yeah. have to just be like the new hotness. Um, it is an interesting point that like had all stars not happened, would people be as excited to see some of these people? I think what's shocking is like how many of them still are relevant in the current era, like in the modern era, you mentioned CT Anissa, I think Brad's there, Jarrell, yep. but I think as demonstrated by the hype around Rachel, just making her first appearance back in all stars for like a Rachel and a Katie for me or someone that could have. I could have not seen for 20 years and I would have been just like absolutely floored to see them here out of nowhere. But it is nice that we are caught up with them more or less all of these people, despite ha it having mm -hmm. been 20 years in a lot of their cases yeah. since they were on, on their first season. I also think it just helps the overall gameplay of this season. Cause you think back for like another famous season 40 winners of war, one of the for survivor, one of the biggest things was like a lot of the old school players from survivor had no real interactions with like the new school and the game was different. And the new school players really took over. But now that like the all, like all stars existed. So you have connections that were able to be built, even if it's, you know, incidental, just by in passing, like Rachel is now connected to some of like the new era uh, all star people that are, are going to pop on. Same with like Derek and like Darrell, like all these people that maybe would be meeting a lot of these people for the first time. They have at least some level of connection to them. 
from an all-star season and then like going to other events because now they're back in the mix like it helps like it helps bridge that gap to like the new eras of like the you know olivia and michelle's and the reese's where it would all be meaning for the first time they have now at least one degree of separation or even less for some of these people which i think helps open up the game and it's not going to be as era defiant Totally. Um, obviously, a lot of, you know, hype in the reality TV community going on right now, especially in RJP around like Survivor 50. And I definitely think uh, for a million reasons, one, for the reasons you said about the all stars, but just two, in terms of the unique format of the challenge, constantly bringing people back for five, 10 seasons, a lot of these people here. Um, it, it's like, not really as much of a risk as like a survivor season. If they were to do like an old versus new, like some of those people are not at all connected where right. I'm looking at all of these people. And I, I mean, from podcasting to like live events, like they're just so ingrained in the current community, despite again, starting their season in the early aughts. So let's dig into the, the people. It's so funny. I'm like, feel like I'm in a rush, but like it's so luxurious that we're just talking about 10 people mm -hmm. today. Like normally we'd be doing the full cast preview and, you know, an hour, but mm -hmm. it's like uh, what we used to do, like the men's preview for Ari the One. We're going way back. It's just like a group of 10 people. Let's just dive into their LinkedIn's and everything. Oh God. When I was on my parents, uh, printer ink. So I was printing like full screenshot of headshots of them. Now I have my little chart, black and white only, um, <laughs> things have changed. All right. Yeah. Let's start with, with Tina. Um, this is the order that was like clipped in a parade magazine. I wonder if it's alphabetical. It's alphabetical. Can we go alphabetically? Yeah. Is it? I mean, Tina's. Where, in what world is Tina? By last name. Part? Oh, that makes sense. Okay. That, in that, <laughs> in in that what world. <laughs> world. Okay. So, Tina, what's interesting also about the challenge, because these people showed up on the real world or honestly, primarily road rules for Era One um, at like in their late teens, early 20s, well, not late teens, like early 20s. Mm -hmm. The people from Era One, like Tina is 43. This is sort of like team 40s. Compared to, again, some of the people were talking about Survivor, when you just generally have more age diversity in someone's mm -hmm. first season, they're in their 60s now. Here, mm -hmm. you've got a pretty spry cast in, for the OGs. Yeah. I, I mean, they're all in like their 40s, but obviously, again, coming back to All-Stars, they had to get themselves in some level of shape, you would think, to like compete in that one. And then if you think about how they did, they wanted to maybe keep themselves in good shape. So, again, shout out to All-Stars. It was a key factor. I like that. I, people should be like, I'm in some level of shape. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So Tina 43 makes her first, uh, appearance on road rules, South Pacific, 2003. How old are you, Brian? I was, uh, 2003. I was 13 unless, you know, depending upon the time of year. Yeah. I'm 12. Um, younger. Here's a question. And we got some questions about our general background of the challenge, which I think we'll save for the preview or the premiere podcast, reintroduce ourselves to the audience. But I'm curious, were you a road rules guy? No, not even the slightest. I don't think I've ever watched a single episode of Road Rules. Don't hate me, everyone. I think there's like maybe I'm gonna work on a theory that like if you're a, if you still watch reality TV to this level today, you didn't watch Road Rules because like if you watch Road Rules, you're outside. Um, I also didn't watch Road Rules. Uh, what's so interesting to me is that Tina was a replacement. She did not appear on her season of the Road Rules until episode uh, ten out of seventeen. And it's hard to imagine the challenge without Tina. And we were so close to the challenge without Tina. That's great. It's like, I mean, this is a wildly compliment to compare her, but this is like Naya. Like Naya was a replacement on the real world season. And then here we go, Hurricane Naya. So sometimes you need that fiery personality to come in midway through. Um, yeah, so I don't know what to say here. Obviously, I'm over-researched and under-knowledgeable, uh, but we'll just say she starts season seven, The Gauntlet, originally aired in 2003 to 2004, just like insane. Um, we last saw her on the challenge proper on The Duel in 2006, where she was eliminated mm -hmm. for punching Beth. I rewatched that season <laughs> recently, and uh, it's unbelievable. I think there are a few people on this season that, perhaps wouldn't have been brought back if what happened on their original seasons happened last year. But mm. uh, it is wild on the duel that they bring Tina back for the reunion. <laughs> that like It's not even like they bring her back the next season. Like She appears on the reunion after punching someone and going home. The mid-2000s was a wild time for reality TV, for sure. Um, but we we most recently saw her, like we're familiar with her probably most recently from her three seasons on All Stars. And I have a really tumultuous relationship 
with Tina as a result of the All Star stuff. Yeah, it's not the know, punching, it, but the All Star. <laughs> I can excuse the punching, but what I can't excuse <laughs> is like basically the quitting and the lack of gameplay, which is what been sort of Tina's mo a little bit uh, on All Star. She like kind of gives up, doesn't even bother to try for one elimination because it's with a friend and just goes home. Um, she doesn't really try the gameplay or politics. And she's like, I'm not good at it, so I'm not doing it in uh, All Star Season Four. So maybe like around her more comfortable people in the challenge proper, she'll want to step up her game and like level up to a season 40. But like her reputation is not can can follow her through all stars. Like she's kind of left herself a little bit more in challenge proper past. And now she's like for better, I'm sure a more different person in, in all stars, but like, she's not like the Tina that if you happen to like leave the challenge from the duel and are coming back for season 40, it's it's a different version. Yeah, but what's was interesting to see is in the trailer that you said dropped today, they really get their money's worth out of Tina. Tina's shown like five times. I feel like she's shown more than anybody else, like Which screaming. <laughs> I feel like that's not great. You know? No, no, it's not great, but like there will be at least one scene, you know? Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, she will be in at least one episode. We can't confirm in one episode. Um, and we'll talk, we got a lot of questions and we'll talk about it of like, if there are any replacements we've made, but just like as a general feeling, I feel like it feels right for Tina to be representing the, the early season, even though I'm not so thrilled with her performance on all-stars. Like I'm more excited to see her on 40 as a representative mm -hmm. of the early seasons than I would be to see her on an all-stars five. And I don't know if yeah. that makes any sense. Yeah. I would say the era one, uh, grouping, I I think it would be the hardest to find any level of complaints. I think you can like pick and choose one or two people, but I think if you did like a family feud of like who you would want, like this 10 would probably be like 10 of the top 13, 14, 15 people. Like, like it's a good, it's a very strong mix of like who you could select for, from this era. So uh, I think people, there's not gonna be a lot of complaining. They call, why is this person here to represent era one? I think this, this 10 is pretty strong in, in that representation. No, it's a fair point. And also just to flag, like the first 10 seasons are an embarrassment of riches of who they could pick to. Mm -hmm. So it's like picking good people out of a million good people in terms of like who'd be willing to come back, who can make the time commitment on like a full season um, versus some of the other eras. But we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, I think it's okay. kind of the interesting thing. This will like a little piggyback into some of like the era talk we get in the future. But I think one of the reasons for that is – there's no like previous era that was like dominating when these people came on, right? Like if you think of like some like era two or era three, like these era one people were still dominating in era two and we're still dominating era three. So like they had the the world as their oyster. Like these were the only people in town. So it, it was a lot easier for these people to make the name for themselves because they weren't competing against the Tina before Tina and the Brad before Brad. Like they were the people. So not to say these people aren't great, but like there was no extra level of competition that like the era two guys had to face when now they're competing against Brad and Derek and Mark. Like if, if the era two was era one, we might feel different, differently about some of those people. Right. No, it's fair. And slots are filled now with these people. Then we get to know them longer. Yada, yada, yeah. yada. Here we are. Uh, I lied about alphabetical. Let me try to on the fly make some connections, do some segues. Love it. From Tina, I think it's only natural that we go to Rachel Robinson. Sure. 41 years old, originally it comes to us from Road Girls Campus Crawl 2002, season 11 of Road Girls. First season of the challenge in 2003, the sixth season, Battle of the Sexes. She then, uh, I was going to say she left us, that's not true, but her last season of the challenge was Battle of the Exes, where her partner was Anissa, if you want to spoiler on who I'm going to go to next after this. <laughs> um, and and I wasn't sure we'd ever see Rachel again until we saw her on on uh, All Stars Four. Yeah, she was on there. She got a lot of a uh, pub for her fitness program. A lot of people shouting it out. Um, this will obviously give her even more eyeballs uh, for her uh, Patreon or whatever the fitness term is. So we love to see that entrepreneurship from from Rachel. I think people were a little disappointed to see her go out so early uh, from All Stars Four. Spoiler alert: We also didn't get to see her really flex her big muscles in her elimination so i think people are excited about some of the potential matchups she can have here um but yeah it's very exciting to have a full challenge proper for for her rachel 
Yeah, I know very little about this format, but if we just take it at face value that some sex segment of this is going to be teams of the eras, mm -hmm. that's very exciting to see sort of Rachel promoted from biggest threat to biggest asset of the team has to kind of change the calculus of how long she'll last. I mean, who knows how long we lasted a team format and if that's even the case, but I do yep. like the the prospect of her being probably the strongest um, woman on her team. I'm just taking a quick look around. Yeah, I mean, it would uh, either yeah. be her and Jody, I <laughs> yeah. think you would say. But yeah, it was a little troublesome in the trailer. Obviously, this could be more episode zero talk, but you hear like, oh, there's a twist every single week. Mm -hmm. That's a little scary when you're, you know, structuring a season with four teams. You don't want to hear like that many twists. I don't know what that means. At least for one episode, there should be at least four teams. We'll see. Um, so one of the juiciest little nuggets here, and the reason I went to from Tina to Rachel is obviously like Tina. Not it shouldn't be obvious. Maybe they're new viewers. Tina, Rachel, Veronica, who's uh, not on the season, right? No. Yes. Um, Veronica, Tina, um, Rachel, very closely connected trio in general. They all were on All Stars Four together. What is interesting is I read a. Reddit recap, thanks to Angel Brit 4 of Rachel's appearance on the Challenge official podcast with Tori and Anissa. Um, and one of the things apparently that Rachel said was like, she really wasn't in touch with Tina, but she was in touch. Or maybe I'm reversing it. Nah, whatever. Uh, either way, as of season four of All Stars, Tina and Rachel on good terms. I know Tina kind of like slighted Rachel in a vote. Mm -hmm. I don't doesn't seem like Rachel holds that big of a grudge towards her. We'll see if anything happens. But as of the recording of Challenge 40, how long ago was All-Stars 4? Two years before? Probably about that. Maybe less. A year and a half, maybe. So we'll see if anything blows mm -hmm. over. Um, as we transition to Anissa, I was very interested to see like where Anissa and Rachel were after mm. their ex's performance. And again, for new listeners, it, it lives rent free in my head that they had one same sex pair on exes and just had them compete. Like that was fine. Re yeah. Forget equalizer. Like they just really <laughs> competing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, they held their own too, and it was great. Yeah, they did. Slay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, it seems like Anissa and Rachel are on good terms. Rachel commended Anissa, apparently, according to Reddit, for being one of the stronger girls in the game and believes that Anissa is underestimated. So that might be nice to see some, like, supportive team members uh, mm -hmm. on this season. And uh, I do have to add this little nugget that has nothing to do with this. Love but that. while I'm here... Uh, Angel Brit 04 wrote that Rachel congratulated Tori for winning season 38 ride or dies and for beating two of the strongest men to play the game. That would be Jordan and bananas that season. And Tori mm -hmm. said, added Devin to that. But Rachel believed that his role was to support Tori. Tori needs to stop saying that Devin is in contention with Jordan and bananas to be one of the strongest men to ever play the challenge. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, look, that's a ride or die, I guess. That's a, you know, going to back. No. So, like, is that also sort of a shot at Anissa? To just to point out that, like, they just beat the strongest men and didn't, like, also beat Anissa in that final? Is that, like, a subtly a shot there? I mean, didn't Anissa break her ankle or something? Yeah, but well, she made it through the final. I don't know. Jordan, like, did like, she? I feel her, like but... the last challenge was only between Bananas and Nani and those, like, cement bricks. No, I Jordan think and Lisa were like limping behind. They did not participate in that last. No, not in the last bit. But I think I think just because they got eliminated. Yeah, because she like was, there was like yeah, just limping. Oh well, yeah, yeah, but... limping. Oh, right. Anissa. I think I saw this is like her seventeenth season, which is it is wild. It is. We have some actually exciting anniversaries uh, in the Eras One and Eras Two cast. But oh, yeah, seventeenth. Season for Nisa, originally coming to us from Real World Chicago, 2002, currently 42. Also, his first season was the sixth season, Battle of the Sexes. Definitely someone we've already talked about as still very much current in the landscape. Mm -hmm. As we we're saying, she was on Ride or Die. So uh, hopefully not too much to catch up uh, the audience on with Anissa. 
she must have what two or three wins through her 17 seasons like that many seasons she's got to have what two wins three wins no not she yeah. has three final appearances and that's more okay. than you have brian that is more that is times more. three mm-hmm um, and sometimes it's more impressive to be invited back as a personality pick and for energy. And I will cut you with words than it is to be. I will roll you in the final instead. I'll roll my ankle. Um, but I do want to say to what you were saying before, I think she's one of the most connected of oh, the era's one people. Hundred percent. She spans. Obviously, she has like the very strong connection to Tori. So right there is like era one to era three, and then Tori is like very well connected to. I think Devin's Devin's in era four, right? So th- that right there gets to that era. Obviously, she's played pretty recently, so she's connected to uh, the era four people. She has like a weird connection to Narice that might be bad. Um, I think watch the Cuz uh, connection. I think it was Anissa's. <laughs> Was Anissa's brother or cousin was hooking up with like Narisa's brother or cousin? No, I thought Anissa was hooking up with Narisa. Oh, it was Anissa cousin. just straight up hooking up with I Narisa's thought brother. it was Anissa. Okay, no, no, you're right. You're right. So th- there's that connection. But yeah, obviously she's like her and CT are probably at the obviously at the cross their um journeys through this through the show, like the most connected people um through this point. So obviously Anissa has to be on the season. I think I think I've seen takes of like, oh, we don't need to see Anissa anymore. Maybe after this, but like if you're doing season 40, like the celebration of the show, Anissa is like one of like the faces of the women for the show across all 40 seasons. So it would feel lacking at this point. Like if the fact that Anissa has been on for this long and then you don't have her on 40 would feel like a giant slap in the face. No, absolutely. And, and not just like um, Anissa is generally connected uh, to go back to the connections, but she's a member of sort of the school of alliances that are willing to like lose the game for each other in like the Mm. Tory Jordan, you know, like that kind of school. And that's another thing that came up apparently with Anissa and Rachel, where Rachel was like, I don't like that people show up with their friends and just like operate from there. And Anissa was like, well, it can be a disadvantage because you're like more nervous to hurt people's feelings. Like girl, stop spinning it. (laughs) It's going to be interesting though, to see Anissa kind of pulled between the old and the new world. Yeah, that'll be a big test to see again, like how the format goes and how the structure goes. But um, it is she, where her lo- loyalty will will go if the Arrow One wins and they want to throw in Tori. Where does that stand for uh, Anissa? Because obviously that would help their team a lot. So I think there will be some uh, some questionings about how this will uh, all go down for her. Definitely. Um, let's go to another well connected person in the era one section, another professional challenge podcaster. And that's compared to Anissa, not to us. Uh, Derek K. Derek Kaczynski. Yeah, sort of like uh, Survivor 47. A lot of podcasters on the on the challenge 40. We've got a lot. Um, Derek. It's funny, Derek, he's been around so much. He's obviously been on now three all star seasons. It, it feels like he's been on Challenge Proper recently, but his last appearance was season 30, which is why I, it, I, I would have thought he would have definitely been on one of the other random ones in the 30s across the years. But the, it has been a minute since the Challenge Proper appearance uh, for Derek, even though he has maintained a lot of the connections to the new era people um, through his podcast. But it, it has been a minute since he's been on MTV. Yeah, uh, it, it's also insane that they named a season Dirty 30. Like that's just as an aside, like what an insane uh, thing. I guess I'm, I think fresh meat is normal. So maybe I shouldn't complain, but yeah, originally getting in on the tail end of era one, originally on battle of sexes Two, um, a much better winning record for Derek than most, not just Anissa. Um, and yeah, like much like Mark long or like some of these other people, he's really established himself as a face and a voice of the challenge. Um, not only hosting the podcast, but like, live events and he's Mm -hmm. very well connected it is interesting like derek on the challenge especially a a a challenge proper is this his first challenge proper season since the launch of their podcast it's a good question um i don't know i would guess so i don't know if their podcast has been around since uh since 30 so I i would say yes um or or recent you know or it was recent right probably so um 
it, it is going to be interesting to see. It sort of tests Stephen Fishback's theory about Rob, where Rob is like, I get voted off right away. And he and Stephen's like, no, people like want to kiss up to you and be on the podcast and get invited to events. Like, will Derek will be able to sort of curry a little more favor because he's sort of the keys to having another reason to like be relevant and go to events mm -hmm. like uh, it would of course be fun. I don't blame these people. So is that a relationship people are going to want to keep alive? And also Derek has, you know, is just beloved in general. Right. Uh, he could be yeah. fiery, but he's definitely beloved. Yeah. I think that's probably more the impactful part. I think if he was like a complete asshole that people didn't want to be around, I think it would be very transparent that we're almost doing it for the podcast. But Derek through all of his time has always been like the lovable underdog of being like undersized and, uh, you know, giving like 180% everything he's ever done. So he's always had that uh, likability factor to the nine. So I think people don't target him. Just, I don't think it's because they want to go to Challenge Mania. I feel like they can, you know, make that happen regardless. So I think uh, people just want to hang out with Derek because they like Derek. Okay. One, when are people going to start kissing up to us? And two, I've been waiting. It's it's interesting. We'll probably be waiting a long time. It, it's interesting that you're probably right. He wouldn't let this uh, stop. You know, there's a what's it called when like a uh, like a parasite rides on your back or something like a symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like um, that, in that example, I was like a whale or something. You know, like I was like this, um, yeah. a barnacle. I think I was thinking of. Anyway, sure. um, but maybe that's like a parasite. Anyway. Point is, there's symbiotic relationship between them, but I'm spiteful enough that if somebody burned me on a reality television show, I would tank this podcast sooner than I would invite them on it. Um, but Derek, is also, though, Derek is also the person, though, that like, you don't like Derek doesn't get like screwed over because even if he gets voted in, he's like, yeah, I'm just going to go in and prove myself in elimination. And like, this is how I want to go out. Like it would, it would be so, I don't can't even think of a scenario where Derek is coming out of the season with like such bad blood with someone that he's banning them from challenge media, Philadelphia. Like I, that would be an unbelievable situation. And Derek and his, and, and I have a lot of memories of Derek that might be false memories, but I do feel like in my own personal viewing, Derek was like the first person I noticed like dialing back the partying so that he could be fresh for the challenges. Mm -hmm. And I like credit him in my mind for like kind of shifting gears from this being like a party summer camp where you're like doing the challenges hungover to a, a real like sport and obviously that turns with other people also but i feel like derek was one of the first people i remember coming in with that mindset he probably one time said like i didn't drink because i wanted to do well in the challenge and i'm like <laughs> right. that guy is an that's, athlete <laughs> i mean that's a drastic statement in 2002 on the challenge so you know if he never did that, be me. Yeah. <laughs> um but also like Derek has a little bit of like you said that underdog thing but he's also like frequently cut right before the challenge mm -hmm. like what was the was it duel or inferno when he's like going in every single time as team captain and then he loses right before is it the duel I think it was um, the duel yeah he just went in over and over again I think that was like he lost I think he lost the west and like a pole wrestle or whatever the version of it was they did there and I think that was what sparked what you're thinking of like all right I need to like really give training like my extra level of effort and then he comes on I think he's actually won three times like he, I think in that like spam of like the JEK dynasty, he was like kind of like the fourth wheel to that. And he was kind of always uh, a part of the, a, a lot of their wins. So, um, you know, that, that paid off. Wow. Not him. neutering his accomplishments, but yeah, he wins uh, three of his seasons in a row in Ferno three Island at the ruins. Um, Gregory Contreras has an interesting um, fact here. Just a cool anecdote. I saw online that Derek is the only contestant to be on season 10 in Ferno two season 20 cut throughout season 30, dirty 30, and now season 40. That feels right. That feels right. Anissa, yeah, feels like Anissa would have been. CT probably, I think he was probably banned at one point for one of those 10s <laughs> or 20s. So that's probably why he wasn't on. So, but yeah, good for Derek. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Inferno, uh, Anissa was not on Inferno 2 or Cutthroat. So not even close. Mm -hmm. But I think Cutthroat others. actually was when CT was banned. I think that was in that like two season. Yeah, obviously it was because then he shows up and he does the whole uh, Bananas Backpack. It's like it, the season was named after him, too, if you stretch. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, technically, CT was on season 20, then, because he was on, you know, he was when they made the most famous moment on season 20. It's like Tina showing up on the reunion after getting mm -hmm. sent home. Um, let's go to another person who has really kept, like, the oh, legacy and Tina. of the challenge. All right, Tina, in a fun fact, Tina was the other uh, 
mercenary brought in on that episode of Cutthroat. So there you go. She was on season 22. Slay. Um, let's go to another person who's really kept like the legacy of the early eras alive in Brad. Uh, sorry, Mark Long. Um, I guess it could have been Brad and I could have just played that off. But no, I want to talk about Mark. And Sonny also wants to talk about Mark. He was like um, sleeping by me the whole time. I'm like, is he really going to make it the whole time? And then I was just waiting for the bark to come. And there he goes. All right. He's gone now. See, some podcasters would kick their dog out of the room before they get started, but not us. And thank no, God. No, I wait. I, I, I play the roulette wheel and I just came up with double zeros. <laughs> um, so Mark is the surprising or maybe unsurprising, surprising to me, only person that I've even really seen some kind of complaints around him being on the season. It's interesting because it makes sense he's on it. He's obviously, you know, his nickname is the Godfather of the show. So you think to have the Godfather on like a monumental season. Self-given? Self I, think so. I think probably. So. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I think it makes sense. But it does feel a little bit like Jeff Probst playing Survivor with like returnees. Like he, it feels like Mark Long is a producer at this point. Or I guess Mark Burnett would be the better example. But like it does feel like he's a producer of the show. And it's kind of weird now he's just like playing in it also but i'm not complaining because we don't the dirty stick about mark also he has never he didn't really play that many seasons like i was looking through his challenge wiki he's like four times i think he's like four or five seasons he's ever been on so like it's not even that much that we've seen mark play and i think this one there's not gonna be any like super reverence for him especially like an all-stars one when he was on and he was like no one would go after him for sure even like some of his early like mid uh challenge proper seasons like battle of the x's like he flew all the way right near the final so like I, I think people actually will look to target him and i think it might be really fun to see mark play with like his back against the wall and how he kind of does because you don't we've never really seen that from him yeah so it's it's a couple interesting things about mark obviously that you've already touched on here so First, just to set the stage, you docked him one season. He's been on six seasons, but it's six a fair seasons. point nonetheless. Um, what's just unbelievable is original. He's on the first ever season of Road Rules from 1995. Uh, he's the <laughs> oldest contestant, I'm going to assume, on the season, but certainly in Arizona at 53. Though you wouldn't look at it. We wouldn't know it to look at him. No. Uh, so shout out to him. Um, and he won season two of the challenge in 1999. That was his first appearance. So, like... To me, if you're looking at someone like Keefla made a great case for himself to be on uh, after his beloved mm -hmm. appearance in All Stars 4. But other than that, like, can you do an era season without reaching to like seasons one or two? You know, I think they're talking a lot about that with Survivor. Like, do you need someone from the first season just to say it was the first season? Yeah. And, and how is Mark not that guy? You know, especially with like what he's done to probably, as we've already discussed, even get this format to be possible with pushing so hard for We Want OGs and that, like, all-stars movement. Yep. I think he absolutely, like, belongs in this era one celebration of the 40 seasons of the challenge. That said, I agree. My stickiness is that, like, he's a producer of all-stars. I tried to look at his IMDb. Has he been a had a producer credit for all four seasons? I know certainly for all-stars mm. four he did. But he was on All Stars One and All Stars Three, which is is worse, arguably. Like if right. he's a producer of the show to be an <laughs> right. actual contestant of the show you're producing. Right. But and and just to give you um, sort of the counterpoint, Robbie Freeman wrote a hot take: Mark Long shouldn't be on this cast beyond championing the creator creation of Challenge All Stars. I can't think of one memorable in-game moment from him. Plus, he was over the hill by season three of the show, hence why he hosted with Eric. Look, Robbie, it was because it was in 1999. Like, who could remember that? We were, like, sucking our thumbs, mm -hmm. you know? But um, <laughs> I, I just think, like, it's not – I'm going to just choose not to worry about the fairness of the fact that he's a producer on a spinoff franchise. Right. Talk about people who might want to kiss up to him. I don't know how much say he has over casting or really anything – besides just having a production credit. So I choose to embrace it, and I'm excited Mark Long is here. Yeah, and I don't know, the over the hill, I feel like Mark's in, like, at least the upper half shape of the men here. Like, I, I, if you were giving me, if you were telling me Mark makes the final this season, I wouldn't say that's crazy, because also Mark usually makes finals. And he's just in, in incredible shape, so I don't think it's that impossible that he even does, like, super well 
in this in this in this season. And again, it's like in some ways, yes, it's like a competition show and it's an entertainment show. But for this season, it's a celebration of the show. And I feel like again, like when Mark comes out, it's like and here is like the Godfather of the show. Like I, I feel like seeing his face in the cast photo, especially amongst this era, is is worth the price you pay for admission. Yeah, and you you got to it about the finals he makes. I mean, I, just not to quote everyone's elimination record because it's boring. And most like decent people are like even 50-50. Mark has has two elimination losses in those six seasons, like in his or actually in his entire career. I think that counts all stars. Um, and he only had one elimination loss in the challenge proper seasons. Mm-hmm. I will say that. I think like half the seasons he was on didn't have eliminations. Like right. he was voted off once, but he was voted off once, eliminated once, and otherwise made the final or won every other season he was on. So it there was a decade ago, but otherwise <laughs> excited for Mark. Totally. Um, let's go. Anyone you want to go to next while I uh, don't have a segue? I mean, we can go to like, I think Darrell. Um, Great. Because Darrell is like super interesting. Obviously, there's a person in era two that we'll get to that like makes his like kind of story super mm-hmm. even more interesting. But like Darrell, again, for like more newer viewers that maybe have only seen Darrell once or twice on an All Stars, like Darrell was the CT before CT. He's the only person to ever win four seasons in a row that he was on. I don't know if it's four consecutive seasons, but four seasons in a row that he was on. The dirty secret though is he's not won since, um, which has been a problem. But I think. Coming into this season, he's obviously every time he's on All Stars, he talks about his level of motivation to provide for his kids, kid or kids. Um, I think he always wants to get that trailer to go uh, through the national park. So we're hoping for him he can do that. But like Darrell was like the guy of guys of this show for the first, you know, almost 20 seasons. So it, it's wonderful to see him on this season as he very much deserves. And I hope he makes a really good run for people that. If they're not watching All Stars, they might not be even as familiar with him as uh, you know some of the old school viewers. Yeah, just to fact check, I also didn't know. I looked it up. Four out of six seasons, so four consecutive for him, but not necessarily consecutive in terms of airing. Yeah. Um, uh, Forty-four years old now. Originally came from Rural's Campus Crawl in two thousand two. Um, yeah, I think like the legacy of Darrell is still rooted in having won those four earlier seasons. I think he hasn't fared as great uh trying his luck at the newer season although like the season amber wins she spends most of the time with Darrell, doesn't she Mm -hmm. when she goes on to win with ct and i think a lot of people including was it janelle and Darrell in that all-star season uh that people think they actually won but production screwed screwed it up uh, yeah when john a was on the on the plane because it was delayed on the tarmac that season right and I think season one, he's in a foot race with Yes, and he's mm-hmm. like stripping off his clothes. And Yes is like, he doesn't know how to properly run in the heat. Like, so Darrell is like in the conversation of a lot of these challenge mm-hmm. proper seasons and all star seasons. And yet it does feel a little bit like we're resting on winning a lot of old seasons, which is awesome. But like, obviously, those seasons, like the seasons now are really stepped up. So I'm really looking for. Darrell to thrive here. I think he still has it in him. Mm -hmm. I do worry that if he doesn't kind of like get over the sort of Charlie Brown (laughs) aspects of his more recent seasons, he might be in jeopardy of like not coming back as regularly, but he really does still have just this like unbelievable name recognition in the challenge. It's well-deserved. And it's not just his athleticism. Like he's one of the most likable guys in the confessionals. He doesn't do a ton but he's good for like some really good confessionals. Yeah, his hit rate is very strong. And again, you know, I, I hinted at, but he's a hundred percent win weight, win rate with Aviva on a season. So <laughs> he's got that going for him. I was gonna say, I think you're the only person who teased about Aviv to talk about <laughs> her on the podcast. Um let's go to another person who I think has had sort of hit or miss more recent uh appearances but is still sort of drafting off of like a really strong more like middle uh showing from the challenge let's go to brad yeah brad um he he's he's the most recent like era one person besides ct and anisa to like appear i think the final reckoning was like season 31 32 so he's 
been on a challenge proper season of not that too long ago. He's been on a bunch of all-star seasons. He is coming off an all-star season where basically the Dodo music was playing like every time <laughs> he set foot on screen, even though we didn't necessarily see it as badly while watching, but the way it was presented was Brad was like basically like a bumbling idiot with everything he tried to do and it went horribly wrong. So he's coming off that. So I would assume that's going to be like a big part of his like intro package, basically being like, I had a horrible showing last time out. I'm here to prove like I still got it. And Brad, like if you just look at him from the physical shape of him, he's one of the strongest guys there. Um, I think he's also like a pretty big dude. So like he's as formidable as you would get. And again, because he has appeared on like a few more recent seasons of the challenge, he has some level of connections, like an era three, era four that people like a Darrell or a Mark outside of like the podcast space with Derek, they might not even have. So Brad might have a little bit more ins to some of the outside eras that could help him. Uh, yeah, last time we saw Brad, like you said, with the Dota music, he like later, I think, told Mike Bloom in an interview that he uh, was coming off of a breakup, wasn't sleeping. Um, it is kind of shady when you Google Brad the challenge. His like Chiron on Google is Tori Hall's ex husband, and it's not when you search Tori Hall's, it does not uh, reciprocate. So yay women. Um, Brad iconically on Real World San Diego. I think, I, as we already said, we didn't watch any of these. I want to say that Real World Chicago might have been a little bit before me, uh, but I definitely remember Real World San Diego with uh, mm -hmm. Cameron, who would go on to be on Southern Charm, um, and Brad, and just like totally, totally remember Brad on his Real World season and throughout his challenge days. Um, we already, I just, we already mentioned, I already dragged him about <laughs> Tori, but one thing that is interesting with all of like the challenge relationships and romances, it's interesting to me that they didn't get any of the sort of like iconic elder breakup exes mm. of the challenge. And in a way I'm like happy. Like I, I did go to see what Tori was up to. She's remarried and has some more kids and probably doesn't need this. But um, it would have been, you know, besides Anissa and Rachel, I don't think there are any of the, like, big couples from the challenge, right? Yeah, I mean, not at least within this exes. Obviously, there is, like, the Jordan and Tori of it all and Jordan with a lot of people of it all. So, like, he's probably, mm -hmm. like, the most interesting ex that's going to be popping up throughout this uh, uh season but not a lot of like the early era people it would have been fun to see tori pop uh, the other tori pop up uh in this space but has she has she um done an all-stars no right i don't think so but think so. um let's go wrap up our last two women and save our big boy for the end um mm -hmm. let's talk about jody uh who i think could be if Mark Long is sort of the odd man out, maybe Jody is the one question mark, you know, light question yeah. mark. Like I think I'm happy to see her, but I didn't, if you had me make a list of 10 people, I might've missed her on this. Yeah. I mean, she came back. So she did all stars too, just to get like reintroduce herself to the world. I think she was someone that people were clamoring for a lot. I think she's obviously right up there kind of right at, right behind a uh, Rachel for the strongest women in this crop for their, for era one. Um, it's also interesting because she's normally you would think of Jordy as like one of the strongest women in a season, but just because of this this cast, like she's probably like fifth, sixth, seventh amongst the women, just because of the rest of the eras, how many strong women there are. So like that's gonna be interesting to see how uh, she navigates. But I think the biggest thing for her is kind of what you're hinting at is like she doesn't really have that many connections. I don't think. I don't think there's that many people that are going to be stumping for Tori, especially outside of this era, even in this era. I think there's a lot more stronger bonds of other people in this world. So. Tori, uh, Tori, J Jody's in an interesting spot where she could be, like, I think if they were targeting someone for strength, like an outside era, I think they might look to Jody almost first because there is no real extra level of connection there. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you don't think that her being attached to the least connected team on Challenge World Championship is going to get her any? <laughs> Just, as Shay? I, don't, I don't think that's providing the, the boost that um, she might hope so. One thing about Jody's background here, and again, why it's so interesting that she's selected for this cast, uh, is she, uh, she was also on Road Rules Extreme with Derek in 2004. She's 43, um, for anyone keeping track. But she had probably the most normal experience. Like what I would think if I did the road, if I did Road Rules and the challenge, exactly what I would expect someone to do. Of like, I appear on the Road Rules in 2004. 
I then immediately do the Inferno 2 in 2005. I then do two more seasons taking me through 2006, 2007, and I move on with my life. Like she was on three seasons. She won two of them. And then she left in like three years. And it's like, that seems like what normal people before social media would do right. with a reality TV opportunity. Yeah. We love the, you know, people screaming, go get a job. She's like, okay, I'll go get a job. <laughs> I'll live my life. She got out. Good for her. Keep her sad. So it's amazing to, to see her back. And speaking of amazing to see her back, let's move on to Katie Cooley, who probably like maybe will be smoking less during the challenges. I'm not sure. Um, she is the oldest woman tying with Veronica to ever appear on a challenge flagship season at 45. Welcome, Katie. Yeah, I would imagine uh, we probably won't see Katie for long, I would guess, um, on this season. I think she's... If How dare there you? Was any... You trying to get killed? You trying to get yourself <laughs> killed? Like, I love Katie. She's like in the mix of like the shift to competition for the challenges, Katie represents the opposite of that, the old school era of the fiery personalities, the coming for the drama, not taking uh, shit from anyone, ready to pop back. Like she represents that in like the previous way that Amanda uh, does now. And the fact that they're also on together is going to be a lot of fun. But Katie represents that for the newer, for the old era. And I love that she's on. I love that it's not all just like the Rachel Robinson fitness class people. You need to represent the challenge. You need that mix of personalities. And Katie is that shot in the glass that will give you that mix of personalities. Still. It's impossible to imagine Era's one of the challenge being captured without Katie. Um, first season, The Gauntlet, season seven. Most recent season, Cutthroat, as we've talked about, the 20th season. Uh, not counting All-Stars. We haven't seen her on the show in like 14 years. It's kind of amazing. Um, we got some questions about Katie and also Tita and Rachel. So Jordan uh, said, how do we think production convinced Katie, Rachel, and Tina to return for the flagship, which seems to last forever in terms of the filming cycle? And while you noodle on that question, uh, Joni Lieben added, I wouldn't be surprised if they just offered Katie a big enough appearance fee to tempt her. She tweeted in response to people saying she shouldn't have gone on All Stars if she was going to refuse to participate in Heights Challenges. That quote, she gets paid more to show up than you make in a year. End quote. <laughs> Respect. Look, if you can pull that off, do it. That's great. Good for her. Are they giving that much money away for just to show up in All Stars? That's kind of unbelievable. Yeah, I would, I would love to know. If I could, like... I know there's a lot of other conspiracies you can like peek behind the curtain, but I would just love to know the appearance fees that these people get on like the challenge. Is paying people a conspiracy? It's not a conspiracy not to pay conspiracy, Just like, workers. I want to know. I, I want to <laughs> know the budget. Like I always want to like get a job at NTV behind the scenes to know like the line by line, how the budgeting works for the appearance fees for all these people. I'm so curious. All right. Well, don't cut that clip. If you ever want to apply for a job, you've given it go. away. I won't um, share right. it. I'll, I'll, I'll swallow the feet. <laughs> Let's wrap up with CT, a man who really needs no preview, but we'll get one nonetheless. Coming to us from the real world, Paris, uh, season 13 and 2013. Um, CT celebrating his 20th season of the challenge proper wow. with season 40. Half the show. Incredible. Um, coming off. Best, he's still Last time he was on, it was back-to-back -back wins, right? He hasn't been on since so technically still a defending champion i even know i guess um not like the defending champion that goes to i guess emmanuel but like one his last two seasons he was on well three of the last four seasons he, he was on and i think coming in i think the target for him would never be higher than, than it is here in a season of grace amongst all men women every, everything in between like ct is the best of the best at this point and it's going to be interesting to see how he navigates that we say that every season that CT is on. Besides, since the dad bod was revised, it's like this guy, they're going to get him out. He's he's not insulated. This person's not there. That person's not there. And he squirrels his way every time. He does. There's, again, not the like a trailer spoiler, but this, hopefully he's okay. But it seems like there's a very troubling situation with CT in the early going. So hopefully that doesn't wreck what could be a very fun uh run that ct is gonna have but i mean again like ct you put him on the mount rush road the show so obviously it's it's great that he was on i think he's probably hinted that he wasn't gonna come back uh recently but the fact that he's back here for 40 huge plus huge win for the show and it's gonna be a lot of fun to see him uh 
doing his thing. Um, one thing just to note from his personal life, he's fresh off a of divorce. I think this is his first season since getting divorced. Mm. Single CT. My God, can't imagine. Boy. Um, Michelle Marcy Marshy says, not to not to dwell on some of these people's troubled past, but can you remind us about early CT and what his fight was at with Adam was about? We we've gotten a CT now 44, you know, obviously began his journey here in 2013, a different man. Yes, very different. Very different. His fight with uh, with Adam. I mean, I'm trying to even think. Obviously, they were in the, the onesies and he beat the crap out of him and then <laughs> smashed the head and beat it. Was the context of that, was he the one that told um, Diem that he hooked up with Siobhan on the roof? Is that how that started? I don't know. <laughs> I, think so. I think that's kind of how I think so. Unless that was a different season. And now I'm like mixing them all together. But basically, like, I think that's how it was. And then CT and Adam had like probably the most famous fight in the history of the show. Um, and then let's uh, being paired together on rivals, uh, conspiracy theory behind that. And now I think they're okay, uh, decent in a decent spot. Um, but early day CT, he was like, when you talk about someone being like a hothead and like, you, you know, flip him off with the get flipped off with a switch, like he got kicked off multiple seasons. Uh, for for doing things, he was out, he was banned from the show. It came back. He was very much the guy like, oh, you could tempt someone into punching you and getting kicked out. Like that was CT, um, and it took a very long time for him to calm down and chill. And that's how eventually how he started winning a lot. But before then, like he was his own worst enemy, and he probably would have eight, nine, ten championships if he was able to like tap into some of that cooler nature that he had uh early days. Yeah, according to the list.com, you're you're right on about that fight that like CT heard Adam was talking to Diem mm. and uh apparently his CT's brother had been murdered, Diem and him had yes. broken up and Adam apparently told others that CT had hooked up with Siobhan and uh that's what started that. Uh yeah, it's it's hard with a lot of these people, right? It's not so hard with the people who aren't on the show, but for someone like CT who did multiple things, not just that, multiple things to be banned from any reality show for life, and we never mm -hmm. hear about him again, and we don't know anything about him again. CT has benefited so tremendously, probably, from staying on his relationship with the show and, like, having this sort of growth. Mm -hmm. And I think we as an audience have benefited from seeing somebody who was at an extremely low point, who did absolutely atrocious, unbelievable, like, unfathomable behavior – um, grow into the person and like father that CT is today. And so mm -hmm. it's tough. Like I'm certainly happy. I don't make production decisions, right? Like I, I don't know what the answer is about like redemption. I think something like CT where it's not racial or racist is maybe different. I, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. but it, it, it is hard to imagine again, this season, season 40 without him, I think, Spoiler for for era two, we're going to be talking about this without Wes, which seems very bizarre. Um, but it would, you know, it would be crazy to have this season uh, without CT. So I hope Adam is doing well and, and is at peace with this. I feel like they've had their apologies, but um, it's a tough, it's tough. And it's probably tough for CT that every time he comes up on one of these things, it probably gets brought up. And when he does his like hometown, it gets brought up, but you know, accountability matters. Yeah, and he's and he's never been one to like run from it or hide from it or like come up with excuses. Like he's fully admitted like the type of person he and the mistakes he made in the past. And now he seems like an overall pretty decent good good guy. So you know we love to see that growth. Um, let's get to a few questions about this eras. I think we aim to do this in a half hour, and we are rounding an hour. That was ridiculous. Why do we think we could do that? Um, we have not grown. Um, Willie Tannenbaum says, question, how did TJ becoming the permanent host affect the game as the eras evolved? He started in season 11, I think, so there's pretty clear dividing line for the eras, too. Do you think these early folks have less of a relationship with TJ, or they've been on enough since then as it essentially evens out? That's a good question. I mean, I think all these people from era one played into technically era two. So like they all have played with TJ as the host. I think the biggest thing that TJ becoming the host just gave the show just like a level of uh, stability. I think the, the biggest thing that these reality shows need that other things like the mole and even sometimes like the traders in, in various versions struggle with is like when you go on the show, you just don't know who's guiding the ship. And I think just having TJ as that stable force um, has been like that huge stability 
through through the years. And he's obviously very beloved. I mean, I still stand by one of the more touching moments in like reality show history is when after his accident and he walks out. Uh, usually he's out and then the cast follows. Like, yeah, the cast was out and TJ followed and they gave him like a standing ovation. There were a lot of tears shed. Like, that was one of the more uh, memorable moments for me in reality show history. And it just points to how beloved he is. And I think having that stability of him was like the biggest thing for what the show has been able to do. Yeah. And he's really the connective tissue between all stars aside from like, you know, Anissa or Darrell, like he's the connective tissue between the, the franchise's world championship. Like, G- G- does he host Joe's versus bros? Why am I even mentioning? No, I think like Victor Cruz. Didn't Victor Cruz host that host that one? <laughs> okay, irrelevant. I'm sorry I even said it. Um, but All Stars and World Championship and USA, whatever, like he's the glue here. And it is a great observation that he starts in era two. Um, but yeah, I did check not to name check again Aviv before we're even on her episode, but I did check. She was the only person where I was like, is she on the cusp? Did TJ <laughs> meet her? But yes, TJ has met and worked with all of these people. And he'll, I think, be a real heart of the show especially in all stars in the last few seasons he's very very engaged he's more vocal he's rooting for these people like we're getting more personal goodbyes like even us tracking the last you know 10 years we've been podcasting tj's always been vocal about his opinions and like tough on people and quitters and whatever Mm -hmm. but i I think he's gotten like a real soft spot in his heart for these people and so it's going to be interesting to see TJ kind of tying this together and uh, it must be like your students coming back like 40 right. years, 40, se- not 40 years, but 40 seasons. And now he's got all of his kids together. It's going to be interesting. I mean, if this season ends with him seeing, with him saying uh, class dismissed as the bell rings, I mean, I'll be <laughs> in the pool of my own tears. So do good. Um, Brittany Ford says the stories that come to mind from this era have, this isn't really a question, but I just loved it. Have a lot of things they'd never allow today or air and just silly effing games. Katie smoking and elimination, Darrell punching Brad ending his four win streak, CT smashing heads, of course, but also being dominant, winning life shields and making eating cookies to beat Shane look cool. Derek's elimination run in the gauntlet too. I remember Nisa for her famous quote. I don't need a gauntlet. I will cut you with words. I really hope they give us flashbacks. I mean, they will. I have no doubt that they're going to like show each and every reason why all of these people are here and they won't be stretching. It will be exciting. Yeah. At the very least in the first episodes or episode zero, 1000%, there'll be flashbacks episode one. I'd be stunned if there weren't. And usually through the season, one of the things the challenge is very good at always is when there's something that's brought up that is in connection to something from the past, they will flash back and show it. So I think we'll, we will be getting a lot of flashbacks. I hope even the challenges and dailies and el- eliminations they do are a connection of things that they've done in the past. And maybe they'll flash back to those as well. So I, I think for a lot of this season, though, this will be a celebration of, of past moments. Let's talk about who we're not celebrating. Caitlin Glancy says, who is your number one missing man and woman from the OGs? And Josh Merkel takes it up a notch and says, if you could add someone to Eras 1 and remove someone from Eras 1, who would it be and why? If you could bring up the slide again. Um, oh, you're ready to go. I'm ready um, to go. Shout out uh, to Stuart, who made this unbelievable chart. One of many unbelievable charts in the Facebook group right now from Stuart. So if you if you want to see this, uh, up close and uh, all of the eras and all of the stats you were compiled, join the Facebook group. Uh, but this chart that you're looking at right now, and you don't need to go to YouTube if you don't want to, we'll just talk about it, is I believe a chart of everybody who would be eligible for seasons one to 10. Uh, so we have a little bit of a reference, Brian, if mm-hmm. there are any names that jump out at you of uh, missing. Yeah. I mean, the first name that I think people would have gotten the big pop and does feel lacking that he's not on is is Landon. Like he's the one that people, whenever there's an all-stars, whenever there's a season, it's like, oh, is Landon getting a call? Is Landon getting a call? And I think if you wanted to put another guy on or even swap out like a Mark Long, if you wanted to for that, um, I think Landon for the guys would definitely be one. And then even for the girls, like I know she's been on it a lot, so it's not like, oh my God, she's back, but it does feel lacking that Veronica has been such a big focus of like that older school person in a lot of new era seasons that it, it would be fun to have her uh, in the mix as well. See, I was sort of happy not to see Veronica just because I think we've seen 
what she has to give. I don't think we should not see her again, but if mm-hmm. I'm choosing between Katie or Veronica coming back to just like a one, like I don't think Katie's going to continue in challenge proper after challenge 40, whereas right. Veronica I could see on challenge 41. So um, I'm excited to give some other folks a chance in the, the, in biggest, the first era. The, the biggest thing that also jumps out, which just goes to show how preposterous it used to be to win the show, is how many people have won the show from era one. Like if you took this, for, like when we get to like era four, it's going to be like three names. I think that, that, like ever won the show and you would go through this, this and like basically every, anyone that has been on the show is one from except from for Tina one. and Anissa uh, <laughs> on the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of team challenges, early days, bring them back. Hopefully this yeah. is one. Uh, um, I thought you were going to say the Miz uh, when, when you were giving the sure. Landon appeal. Um, I think Theo Vaughn is someone who jumps out not only because he's famous, but because I really remember him. I think he famously said on the scale of one to fun, Danny's like lightning hitting you in the ass, which is an incredible quote that stays with me as a person. Um, I think yes is called out for some people because of his all-stars win and, yeah. you know, kind of like uh, in the Jody camp of like someone that they reminded us of like a Kifla and then didn't bring him back. But but I'm really fine with it. I'm I'm really fine with the men that they have. Oh. Um, Coral, obviously, if you had a dream cast, I'm sure Coral said no to this. Like, I'm there's sure. just no way they wouldn't beg Coral to be on. Or maybe this. they said no to like her price or something. I don't know. I don't know what Coral's yeah. asking for these days. Um, but just like I'll just shout out a bunch of them that just jumped out at me as I looked in this. I think Beth, lover or hater, is somebody that's in that sort of like Mark Long like icon category. Yeah. Um. Uh. Timmy, Alton, Susie, like there's just so uh, it's an embarrassment of riches. Like they could have dropped everybody they have and picked 10 new people. That would yep. make sense. Yeah, it could have been Battle of the Era One and they could have filled out a cast. <laughs> Which is supposed to be all stars. Let's get back to right. regular all stars friends. <laughs> just pick from these people. You could keep Ace, you could keep Pacella back, Adam, Kendall. Like there's so mm-hmm. many people. Um, all right, so that's fun. Um, let's go to Brian, the segment you wanted to do. Uh, about the the problem with the branding we have this season. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, we can't be saying era one, era two, era three, era four when we're describing these teams. I can't be using the colors because then I have to be saying dark blue and light blue, and that's not happening. So I tossed out to the group, our, a lovely Facebook group, to come up with an official name that I, I, maybe the show will give it to them as well. But at the very least on the podcast, we will give official name to this era and every era subsequently so when we're speaking them we don't have to just say era one i think this was like the easiest one to name um i think as we go through it we can uh, come up with some more interesting names but um yeah we want to give a name to the era one so we have a couple suggestions so the most popular suggestion liz hunt said this but a few other people said this would be the ogs yep uh i think mark long gets a production credit a writer credit on that also um and then tiffany rex Having fun said where it all began, the golden era, the fun era, party challenge era. It's definitely the vibe. It's definitely the vibe of, of seasons one through 10. I think OGs is what you were angling towards is what it names itself here, though. Would it be a challenge podcast if we didn't have a jump cut that made no sense on <laughs> tech issue wise? Uh, fantastic. Uh, but let's uh, go with the name. Uh, I think I vote OGs. Um, but as I said before, which is now cut out, um, <laughs> like, I can't be tamed. So I can't promise that I will respect these names if the spirit moves me. But um, I like, I think OGs make sense to lock in for, for this. But I will defer to you, Brian. This is your your baby. No, let's do OGs. And if TJ wants to give them an official name as we're going through, um, we could follow suit to TJ. But until then, we take precedent and we will call them the OGs. Until then, have a good one. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's then. era one. That that's is era a wrap one. on era one. Yeah, very excited. Get to era two next. But until then, subscribe. Robswebsite.com slash challenge feed. Hit that bell on YouTube also to, su- to subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Colin Brian underscore TikTok, challenge wrap ups. You can follow you. Can't follow me anywhere. Find me in the Facebook group, challenge wrap up Facebook group. Uh, 
a lot of fun there. And uh, listen to New Girl Old Guy, listen to me and Mike Bloom on the Survivor season 50 casting, whatever, from Millennials Gen X. That was a lot of fun. That's either available now or will be available very soon. Um, and, and join us for Errors 2. This was fun. Errors 2. I can't say Errors 2 will be better, but Errors 2 will be a lot of fun also. It'll be just as good. Till then. Have a good one.